By the end of this video, you're going to have no problem at all solving quadratic equations where we get imaginary solutions. We're going to be going through and solving two quadratic equations where we get imaginary solutions. And if you're looking for the notes for this video, and of course, guys, you know, I'm talking about the printable notes for this video. I'm going to have those linked right in the description down below. So starting with our first problem here, we've got x squared plus 6x plus 10 is equal to 0. And since this is a quadratic where the x squared is by itself, meaning there's not like a, a 2 here, or a 4, or anything gross like that in front of the x squared, we can just try to factor this like normal. So we can see, can we find two numbers that add to be 6 and multiply to be 10? So think about that for a second. Can you find those two numbers? Well, after doing some thinking, you might realize that you can't find two numbers that add to be 6 and multiply to be 10, no matter how hard you try. And so what you're going to have to do here is turn to the quadratic formula. So to use the quadratic formula, we need to know what a, b, and c are. And those are just our coefficients, right? You've done this before. So a is the number on x squared, so that's going to be a 1 here, right? You can picture this as being a 1 times x squared, and that's completely fine. b is the number on x, so that's going to be 6. And then c is the number without an x, so that's going to be 10 here. And so now that we have our a, b, and our c, we can plug into the quadratic formula. So we get that x is equal to a negative, and then we have b, which is a positive 6. So we could plug that right in. And then we've got plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's going to be a 6 squared. And then that's minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 10. And that's all going to be over 2 times a, and a is 1, so I can plug a 1 in there. Okay, so now that I've plugged into the quadratic formula and done all that work, it's time to simplify. So, let's start simplifying here. I get that x is equal to a negative 6, plus or minus the square root, of 6 squared, that's a 36. And that's going to be minus 4 times 1 is 4, times 10 is 40. So... That's the number I'm going to put here. And that's going to be over 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay? And now the last thing that I need to do to simplify under the square root here, I've, I've got to just subtract those two numbers. So I get that x is equal to a negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 40. That gives us a negative 4. And that's going to be over 2. Okay? So before in like algebra one or before you learned imaginary numbers, what you were taught to do when you saw the negative underneath the square root is you were taught to answer that this quadratic has no real solutions. Okay, that's what you were taught to say, no real solutions. And notice that's exactly true, right? There are no real solutions here, but there are imaginary solutions, right? We do get imaginary numbers when we have a negative underneath the square root. So now that we know about imaginary numbers, we can actually go a little bit further with this. And if you haven't seen my videos on imaginary numbers yet, you're still a little bit confused with that. I definitely recommend you check them out. I'll link my algebra playlist right in the top right hand corner. Okay. So what we can do to go a little bit further is we can simplify this square root. We can simplify the square root of negative 4. Now to simplify that square root, what I'm going to do is take away that negative, right? Because we know what the square root of 4 is. That's just 2. So I'm going to write the square root of negative 4 as the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 4. Right? And that's completely okay. Remember, the property of square roots is that when I multiply these two square roots together, what I end up getting is just a square root with these two numbers multiplied together. So negative one times four, that's negative four. Okay, so this is a completely okay way to break up the square root of negative four. Now the square root of negative one, that's what we call the imaginary number i. And then the square root of four, that's two. So we know that the square root of negative four is two times i. Okay, and so that's just how we can write our square root. And so we'll write that x is equal to a negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 we just said was 2i and that's over 2. Now there's one thing that we can do to simplify from here. You can see that every single term that we have is a multiple of 2 and so what we can do here is just divide by 2 on top and bottom and when we do that we get that x is equal to a negative 6 divided by 2 that's a negative 3 and then we have a 2i divided by 2, that's just i. 
in the denominator we've got 2 divided by 2 and that's just 1. And so we can put our answer as negative 3 plus or minus i all over 1 or honestly let's just write that as negative 3 plus or minus i. And that's going to be the answer for problem 1. So this was a problem where we were completely able to get rid of that square root. So it ended up turning out pretty nice. But what about a problem where we're not able to completely get rid of that square root? That's what we're going to be doing next. So for our next problem, we're going to be doing 4x squared minus 4x plus 3 is equal to 0. You can try to maybe solve this with factoring by grouping or something like that, but you're just not going to be able to. Okay, And so what you're going to have to turn to is the quadratic formula. So let's go through and find our a, b, and our c. Our a, the number on x squared, that's 4. Now b, our number on x, that's negative 4. And then c, our number without the x, that's 3. And so now we can plug into the quadratic formula. We get that x is equal to, well, we've got a negative b. And so we put the negative there. b is negative 4, though. So pay very close attention here, okay? There's going to be two negatives. And a lot of people mess that up and they'll only put one negative down. Right? One of these negatives comes from the formula, but the other negative comes from the fact that b itself is negative. So there's two negatives going on there. And where a lot of people mess that up is that they'll you know, forget one of those negatives and they'll only put one there and they'll get easy points off on their quiz or test. So you definitely don't want that to happen. So make sure you pay close attention to that. So anyways, Let's keep plugging in here. We have plus or minus the square root of b squared. That is a negative 4 squared. And then we have minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is 3. And that's all over 2 times a, which is 4. OK, so now we can do some simplifying. We've got a negative negative 4 out front. Those two negatives make a positive, so that's a positive 4. Plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared, that is a 16, a positive 16. And then we have minus a 4 times 4 is 16 times 3 is 48. So we've got minus 48. And that's all going to be over 2 times 4, which is 8. Okay? So that's nice. But uh, we got to subtract those two numbers underneath the square root. And when we do that, we get 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 48. That is a negative 32. And that's all going to be over 8. Now, let's go through and simplify the square root of negative 32. So, taking the square root of negative 32 and just starting to break this up. Let's first get that negative away from the 32 so we can simplify the square root of 32 like a regular square root. So we take out the square root of negative 1 and we know that the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 32 is the square root of negative 32. Now from here the square root of negative 1 that's i. That's what we call the imaginary number i. So we're all set there. But then the square root of 32 we can break that up and what perfect square do you want to take out there? Well, we could take out a 4, right? We could say that this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 8. And the square root of 4 is 2. But then you got to keep breaking up the square root of 8, and you have to break that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. It just ends up being a lot. And so a quicker way of doing that is taking out the largest perfect square that you can. And you might be able to see that we can actually take out the square root of 16 there. And the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 32. So you can do either way. But this way is definitely faster. The square root of 16 is 4. And then can we simplify the square root of 2 anymore? Well, no. So that ends up being as simplified as we can get the square root. So the square root of negative 32 we can write as a 4 times i times the square root of 2. And that's what we're going to plug in right here. So let's do that. We get that x is equal to 4 plus or minus. Again, the square root of negative 32 is a 4i times the square root of 2. And that's over 8. And then are we done here? Well, not quite. There is something that we can do to simplify here. What we can do is divide by 4 on top and bottom, because every single term here is a multiple of 4. And dividing by 4 on top and bottom, what we would end up getting 
is that x is equal to a 4 divided by 4, that's 1. And then 4i squared of 2 divided by 4 is going to be i times the square root of 2. 8 divided by 4, that's 2. So that ends up being the answer for our last problem for this video. Now you'll want to do more problems with this to really get the hang of things. So in the description, I linked a worksheet with 10 more problems on it with solving quadratic equations with imaginary solutions. And if you want to walk through those problems with me, I have an extra video linked in the description where we do exactly that. And the last link I'll put in the description is going to be for all of my other extra videos for all the other topics I cover in algebra. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video and I'll see you soon.